Well, Marky Dragon, also known as Marcus Eikenberry in real life, and this is the best of the live shows. Hello, Roman, you're on the air. Oh, hello, Marcus. Finally, good to see you. It's an honor to be with you, sir. I'm sorry yes. I don't have a camera right now, so it's only okay. going to have to be voiced tonight, okay? Okay, so Roman, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm Roman. Everybody knows me as a Russian caliber on the forums, in the community, and in the game. Um, ah, and so this other guy wasn't really you. No, but he sounded pretty damn good. I mean, he really <laughs> sounded close. I, at, for a second, I thought it was Borat, but then I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> it was really nice, though, the way he sounded. Yeah. So, I'm an art director for the War Z, and uh, my responsibilities okay. include making sure the terrain, the trees, the models, the characters, the animations, and all the lighting and all the guns get in the game in a specific time and the specific budget. And so this is pretty much what I do. Mm -hmm. and I do not control the marketing or the decisions <laughs> in the business. I have to tell you this right now. So any questions towards this should not be directed exactly at me. Right. Uh, so, um, okay. So, well, let's, uh, yeah, I, hmm. I wasn't really expecting anyone from Warzy to call in, but I think that it's, uh, it's, it's really cool that we caught your attention and you're here. Thank you. Um, and... So what is, what is something that is on your mind that is, um, that is part of the public perception, but is, but the public's getting it wrong? I think the biggest problem for us right now is the, the PR and the communication of how things are being promised and how things are getting delivered through official announcements and then how the media and our own community looks at it and then something is not properly gets communicated and gets out there and then we now have to catch and explain why we said this or what we meant by that mm -hmm. so I think our biggest thing about this is how we communicate ourselves and what we say that we have and what we do deliver and we have to make sure that that we actually promise and deliver what we have. So right now, right. the biggest problem right now for us is the way the communication between departments getting out there. Mm -hmm. But it's actually getting fixed, and uh, it's been brought up already many times. And uh, this is our intention: is to actually fix that pipeline between departments, making sure everything gets properly tested and communicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, and you know, I think that. Um, uh, that my my byline lately has been that Warzy has greatness, um, but its administration has dumbness. <laughs> That's exactly what I've been hearing a lot. This is what we actually see. That's what people say. And, uh, you know, that's the thing. I mean, the game, like everybody says, has a lot of potential. The entire development team believes in the game more than Ever. This is our child, and we're going to be continuing on growing this as developers, no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so, what um, <clears throat> what is what is some of the uh, so so? Let's talk a little bit more about what your part is in the development of the game. And uh, so, so uh, now you said your art textures and and everything. I am in charge of all the art uh, that you see in the game. And mm -hmm. yes, there's been a lot of complaints about some issues with textures, resolution, and stuff like this. Uh, so basically, yeah, my responsibility is to include everything to do with art in the game, not necessarily on the website or in the press release stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, what um, now <clears throat> do you feel, being an artist for the game, do you feel that, um, that art? makes the game or is or is you know the highest quality art required for the game to be good that's a good question marcus my personal opinion about this is actually i think the gameplay makes the game it's how mm -hmm. addictive it is i mean look at minecraft Right. There's not much graphics to this, but you just lose time to a point where your wife, your parents or your girlfriend's like what 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 why what happened to you the week? 
You just sit there and <laughs> your computer your week? playing. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's not the day, it's the week. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I personally believe the art is a great medium to kind of put you in the atmosphere of the game. And this is what we're trying to do. And this is what we're going to continue on creating the atmosphere. But that's just the secondary part. I think the gameplay and the addiction part and when you're having social great time with your friends, that's what matters to me personally the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think art is the secondary. And I actually want to say also sound is a huge part of it as well. Oh, so sound is actually more important than visuals in my opinion. Um, because because the sound sets the ambience, it sets the tone, it sets the... Absolutely, yeah, um, it's the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, I, when I'm playing, I keep hearing things that sound like footsteps and but the, but they're not really footsteps and so i'm like looking around you know <laughs> yeah, exactly who's following me <laughs> it's nobody oh i'm just being creeped out <laughs> you know well, that's another thing sometimes you know you, you create the ambient sound in the game and that can mistaken and mislead the player he thinks something is about to happen and this mm -hmm. is something that we're trying to polish with our game as well we want to create the ambient sound that's not too alerting because a lot of people think that something is about to happen, right? Some event is about to take place. Mm -hmm. But you're right, absolutely, the sound is the greatest part of the game as well. So, um, have you watched my uh, live stream play at all? Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm a fan, personally. I, this is awesome to watch you when you play. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, exactly. Keep complaining so you guys will know what's on my mind. <laughs> keep complaining, keep bringing this up, because I just want to make sure the community understands that, you know, what business is business. We mm -hmm. are here as developers to listen, and we are going to do everything to fix this for you guys. Yeah. So, um, how do you, uh, what's your take on the issue of when I'm at the highest resolution graphics, the game looks really darn good, but I recently switched to the lowest, not resolution, uh, quality. Mm -hmm. uh, I recently switched to the lowest quality level because I'm able to see and kill players better. Because of the grass, right? And yes. then uh, all the features turn off and then you can get a nice clean uh, shot. Re relax, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's been done since the Counter-Strike days, when I used to turn everything, it's for competitive, most of the competitive professional players, mm -hmm. they play only on low, so they can get a very good frame rate, clean environment, and get the kills like this. It's a lot okay. easier, right? Yeah. So, the one thing we tried lately is to make sure that the balance of the ecosystem, including grass, the trees, is still kind of the same on the low quality, so the people can take advantage of this. And this is something that we're continuing and improving. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of hard, you know, to find that balance. And how much do you turn off in for the low settings without sacrificing too much of a graphical quality? And it's going to be in an ongoing process for us for a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I got the chat room asking me a question here. Absolutely. And uh, they say, this is uh, from Clone Abuse. Uh, why the basic character models and anim animations are all uh, ported models from War Inc? Well, actually, the, the, the official ones that we had on the Alpha, we did take them from War Inc. and we just tweaked them a little bit temporary while the production department was cranking out and working on the actual characters because we had a lot of pre-production time to discuss on what kind of characters we want to bring into this game and we didn't want to just you know make them really fast and be like hey here you go guys mm -hmm. this is also something that's going to be an ongoing process but as for the animations I don't think that's correct because the animations for the characters are uh, just been recently uh, created and we just finally got a really good animator because before the artist who was a very good technical artist and multitasked and he's really talented he was doing both environments and animations at the same time which is really hard to do so we actually yeah. had to find an animator and to find a really good animator in this industry guys this is really hard because they either want a giant salary <laughs> or they're just not available at the time and most of the animators are really picky at what they want to do so for animation has always been the hardest thing to properly tackle and create perfect you know that's interesting so now I know that you guys use the or I shouldn't say I know what I what I believe 
that I've been told, which sounds likely, is that that WarZ is using a War Inc. engine. Well, the engine is called Eclipse. For for the War Inc., we used the earlier version of the Eclipse, mm -hmm. and then we took that engine and we decided to add a lot more features, and which we we're actually still adding right now. Right. And um, we tweak the engine a lot so we can fit a lot of stuff in the open world, you know? We decided to start with a medium-sized map first. We tested even bigger map, and we decided that for right now, it'd be a lot more comfortable if we fit a lot of stuff into a medium-sized map. Mm -hmm. Because to make an open-world game and have high-resolution textures, models, trees, grass, lighting, all the effects, and when you throw 50 to 60 players in one map, you're going to have some issues with frame rate. I mean, we can make a tunnel game similar to like Call of Duty or uh, let's say Fear, where you follow the roller coaster and mm -hmm. you don't have an open world. We can create all kinds of high resolution textures and geometry. But for an open world, it's a very big challenge to make the art consistent. And this is something that we're going to continue on improving. So to answer your question is, it's not exactly the same engine. It's more of updated and more pimped out engine. Mm -hmm. Did you did you work on War Inc? Yes, I did. And so, um, did uh, how did the idea for War Z come about? Well, since we started on War Inc. Um, we wanted to create an experience for players for where Battlefield, we were always fans of Battlefield games because they had a lot more open world and we're fans of shooters and at the same time a lot of the team members are fans of zombies. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few of us actually played this mod called uh, Sahrani Life for the first original Arma. I'm not okay. sure if you've heard of this but it's an amazing mod. It was not really big, but it was really fun. You can be either civilian or cop. You can grow drugs. You can do all kinds of stuff. It was a big open sandbox. And then, like around 2010, we started bouncing an idea of what if we populate a little map with zombies and then we get to fight players and zombies at the same time. And this went on and on, but we were busy with the war rink at the time. So um, the idea was born. And then we kind of didn't take it too far with this. We kind of paused it for a little bit to continue on polishing more ink. And then, of course, the day Z exploded, and we were like, well, there you go. You know, this was also part of our idea. Let's revive this. Let's continue on working this. Mm -hmm. So um, do you guys play, play the game? Oh, apps. I'm in the game every day, and a lot of developers are in the game. After hours, most people go have you know good times with their families. I go and play the game with guys. I mean, probably some people can vouch for me in the chat. <laughs> I actually, spend a lot of time with streamers and in the game with people. So um, now, uh, is there any company policy that um, that says the um, that, that says that everyone who's working on the game should be playing the game? There is no policy, but it's kind of like a common sense. If you're making a game, you should be there playing with people and listening to people and testing the same stuff with people, you know? Because you can test this by yourself with the team at work during work hours by four or five guys. It's not the same as those people who play the game as players. Mm -hmm. You get to witness a lot more crazier stuff. Like some people are cr really, really good at what they do out there with shooting, and sometimes I go and play and I get shot, and I'm like, "This has to be a hacker." <laughs> but no, this is just a really damn good sniper. We, we've 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 like we've watched that. people several times, and I, I'm so disappointed to see that the that the timer now disconnects you 60 seconds after you're dead. <laughs> Because oh, because we so many times I'm like I know this guy is a hacker and and last weekend I went and just charged into this building where this guy was and he shot me dead right on the floor where he was and I just sat there watching him and exactly, yeah. and you know I wanted to see whether or not he was a hacker and uh, I'm not 100 percent sure he was but um, he was just he was either damn incredible 
or he was <laughs> shooting us through the walls. You'll be surprised, Marcus, how many people out there are actually really damn good. This is yeah. insane. And your first gut feeling is to call him a hacker. Because mm -hmm. you feel ashamed of yourself, you're trying to protect internal soul, saying that, my god, I just got owned, he's got to be a hacker, no way, he's just better than me. But mm -hmm. no, there's just people that better than us sometimes. Yeah, it really sucks. But yes, there are <laughs> issues of hackers, I mm -hmm. cannot not mm -hmm. stress this right now. And we are working on it hard. Um, the technical parts of that I can't really explain to you because I'm right. an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, the programmers will probably be able to answer much better than I do. But this is something that is definitely being worked, and it's a very sensitive issue to us. Right. We will not put that aside at all. It's a, it's a very sensitive issue to the players. Absolutely, and, I hundred percent agree. Um, I can I can tell you that it um, it when you put your heart and soul into a game, and and you're just really enjoying it and everything. And then bad things keep happening to you over and over again. The fun is removed from the game. And once the fun is gone, then um, you quit playing the game. Absolutely. And uh, I know that when unexplained thing, un things that are unexplained happen to us, um, you know, I, I myself, I'm always an optimist. I'm like, well, that guy is just damn good. But <laughs> good, yeah. I know that, I mean, I did, I did watch, uh, I was watching another live streamer the other night, and he had a guy that started shooting from inside the post office, and we watched him walk right through the wall, continuing to shoot, and killed the guy on the other side of the wall. Now that's a clear violation. That's a heck mm -hmm, right there. Mm -hmm, yeah, and and I knew that when I saw it. Um, but I can tell I can tell you that you know th there's something in the video game industry. I don't know how long you've been in the video game industry, and and, and how long you've been on it, whether or not you've had much dealing with the business side of it. Fourteen years. Fourteen years. Okay. So uh, have you ever heard of customer irritation level? Oh yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> So um, this is something that I first heard with EA, uh, with uh, Ultima Online, and and they were like, you know, our customer irritation level is only 19%. And I thought to myself, holy shit, 19% of the people are irritated with you. And so... That doesn't sound like a big number, but it is a big number. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. People and, don't understand how big number that is in reality. Mm hmm mm hmm and so uh, do how golly um, so I imagine you know I don't I, I hesitate asking you about other departments within within you know the war DZ development but you know for yourself um, I'm sure you're paying attention to what is irritating players having to do with the artwork Absolutely, and that's just like you said, I'm sure our number of irritated players is a lot bigger, and I'm not going to probably deny this because I see this, I follow this, I read a lot of the community's outrages and all the reviews. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing, like you said, comes to my mind is to defend my department first, and this is of course what I'm going to do, naturally, <laughs> because I am responsible for art, these are the guys that are making the art with me, this is something that I'm going to put my balls on the plate, right? Mm -hmm. But of course the other departments are also part of my soul and this is my care, I mean I care about the designers, I care about the programmers and those guys are also doing an amazing job, so yeah, I actually, well of course first and most I'm going to think about my own department but I also put as much love to other departments and we talk about this a lot and uh, and now this was a great refreshment for us all and after holidays we're gonna kick even more ass than what we're doing right now so this <laughs> is definitely gonna be guaranteed do you guys do you guys keep stats on your end of of, of you know what what the how, how do you prioritize what you work on well we try to get a lot of team meetings once a week we got get together with the key people the leads and then we talk about stuff like this and then we you know between the meetings we always gonna always have emails and a lot of angry emails keep flying around a lot of good emails keep flying around and then once we identify the issue like this needs to be talked about ASAP let's schedule a meeting let's get together uh, another thing about we have a completely different offices the art 
is located in one area of the California, while the rest of the team is in uh, LA. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much try to get uh, at least twice a week together and see what's happening. Let's see what we can fix. Let's see what's uh, what's our priorities because there's a lot of stuff we're trying to squeeze in and fix and polish at the same time. You know, yeah. so it's it gets overwhelming at times, but um, I think you know with the uh, with more people we're going to be adding to the team, the more tasks are going to be allocated, and uh, so some people can take a breathing and step back and relax and do what they're really really good at and what they're passionate about, versus throwing all kinds of tasks on some of these people that they're not exactly passionate about. You know? Yeah. So what? Um, so so, you know, in in uh, do you know how many copies of of Wars have been sold? What kind of number range we're in? I do not have that information, Marcus. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, just off of my things that I've read, I would say it's probably over 400,000 copies. Um, and and I, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure I'm right on that, but that's my that's my best guesstimate. And um, would you would you say that uh, War Z is having good success? Well, what would you define as a good success? Okay. Um, let's let's see. Is Warzy being profitable enough to increase the development budget to make it an even better game? I think this is actually a big thing for us right now. With the with all with well, it's not good for all the media that's happening right now, but it's just crazy with all the noise. Mm -hmm. The amount of people that actually want to check it out, what the fuzz is all about. This is crazy for us. Right. And yes, the money that's being generated with sales is actually going to be put back into the development. Absolutely, that's the key. That's what the development team is proud about, and this is what uh, we're definitely looking forward to: is mm -hmm. hiring a lot more people and putting them on more tasks. So I have I have one one last thing I want to ask you about, and that is what can us as the players do to help you work on these issues that are causing problems for us? I think the most important thing that everybody can do is to be constructive with their feedback. Um, when I go on the forum sometimes and I see a, a post that says your game sucks, so of course I'm going to click on it to see why this person says the game sucks. And then he says, you suck monkey genitals or something like this. And then <laughs> it's not enough information for monkey genitals for us to think why the game sucks. So the more constructive... Um, actual feedback we get including pictures screenshots uh, mm -hmm. descriptive ways on uh, delivering us the message why the game sucks and you know like I said also after holidays we're gonna be retasking a lot of community managing stuff we're gonna be looking at our rules how the forums are getting handled how the moderators uh, do their job so I think the best for players to do is keep sending the feedback. I mean, the hate is always going to be there. We can't, no, if, like I said, if you go outside, you look around and there's nothing offending you, you don't live in the free country. Right. So it's okay. Keep sending whatever you can to us guys and be very constructive about it. As much mm -hmm. information and pictures and screenshots, videos, stuff like this. Does it, does it, um, you know, it, in, in my companies that I've owned, um, we've had company meetings, and whenever someone would bring up a problem, we always required them to have a possible solution. And because without that, it was just complaining. Um, but exactly. With, but with a possible solution, then it is being active to, you've thought about the issue, and, and you have a, um, you know, it, it shows that you have some understanding of the issue. Um, <clears throat> Would, would you find it constructive if people who had a complaint also, um, you know, uh, included what they thought might be a possible solution? Well, this is actually one of the biggest thing I love about Sergey. Because every time I tell him, dude, we got to fix this. This shit sucks. And then <laughs> he actually is the one that says, well, this does not help me. You need to actually tell me the solution or don't talk about that at all. And mm. I'm like, oh, yes, I actually should have brought the solution up. Let me, I'll get back to you on that. So, yeah, Marcus, you bring up a really good point. So, whenever people start c 
complaining or you know giving us the feedback solution would be ideal mm -hmm. yeah so okay so I'll keep that in mind and um, so I have certainly done uh, a lot of complaining about the game um, but uh, I hope that that shows you guys uh, the level of passion I have for the game and how I see the potential for greatness in it. Uh, and uh, it I will... has been noted, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, you, man. Um, okay, well, uh, any any final thoughts that you have? Well, I just want to thank you for doing this. I mean, this is really cool to see people live, you know, not just on the forums or mm -hmm. in the other messengers and stuff like this, but seeing people live with you right now talking about this and letting us know exactly all the issues. And uh, I just want to say, guys, it's been a kind of crazy ride for us, but we're not going to abandon you. We will not shut down. We will not do anything stupid. We're going to continue on doing what we do, and we're going to believe in what we we believe in what we're going to do and then uh, create even better game. Yeah. A lot of things ahead. Good. Well, I'm enjoying the game, and um, uh, if, uh, gosh, there's some easy issues to fix, and if th those can get fixed, it's going to make such a big improvement. Um. <laughs> well, you, Marcus, you should, if you have a chance and time, please stop by by our forums and tell us what those easy things you're talking about. I would love to actually read them and then pass this to the team. Hmm. Okay. And I tell this to everybody in the community. Guys, keep coming with uh, ideas and stuff that you have to fix for us, and I'll make sure that this gets delivered to the team. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Uh, thank you, Roman. I really appreciate you calling in on the show tonight. Thank and, you so uh, much, Marcus. Feel free to call so in now, anytime. You got it, my friend. Thank you. Okay, take care. Have Oops, I cut him off while he was saying, have a good evening. I'm, I'm sorry about that. So, okay, well, that was kind of an unexpected call. Um, that, is, um, uh, that is cool to hear Roman's passion for the game and his, uh, his uh, desire to make the game uh, as good as possible and everything. And so I uh, appreciate that. And uh, it gives me a little bit of hope for the future of the game. And uh, I do, when I complain about the game, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I almost always have a solution uh, that I include. And um, uh, hopefully, uh, well, obviously Roman's been listening. And uh, so when it applies to his stuff, maybe some of that stuff will get fixed. I don't know that I've complained about the artwork too much. So, and my only one point that I had, which was about how, um, how I changed it to the lowest graphic settings so that I could get a, a better uh, play experience and see the other players to kill them easier. Um, you know, he brings up a really good point that a lot of first-person shooter games and stuff, a lot of professionals do that, and that's why they do it, because they are able to get a better advantage in the game. Now that you've made it this far, can I interest you in another video? You know, in the upper left, I talk about the future of translation. You remember Star Trek? You remember, I mean, of course you remember Star Trek. You know what it is, the communicator badges. You know, I think that those are going to become reality in the next 10 years. Uh, you know, we won't have necessarily starships that we're communicating with, but it will do the translations like was shown in, in the TV series. So I'm looking forward to that, and that's my prediction. I'm talking about it there. So in the upper right, what the fast, you know, this is an older video. Look at that. I have hair. Uh, and, uh, and in that video, I actually show how um, uh, what the fast works and why it is so good for anyone who is playing like a Twitch-based game that has any lag. Or even not a Twitch-based game, but you have extreme lag. This can help because it actually makes a more direct route for you to get to uh, the game server. Uh, thus reducing lag and I explain how it works there and uh, in that video also uh, has a link on how to get it and they now offer 30 days free trial so you might want to check that out if you have any lag issues um, <clears throat> you know in the lower right uh, I have uh, I have uh, a little War Z action there it's in the dark that one is kind of hard to see 
But you know what? That is when it's most tense. So if you like War Z stuff, check it out. That'll link to my playlist. Uh, and then in the lower left, you know, I get all kinds of people who ask me all kinds of entrepreneurial questions. And um, that one talks about a teenager who's looking to start out. You know, does he do school? Does he complete school? Does he start working on a job right away? Does he start with making a new company right away? And I try and go through telling about how I got started and uh, what things I would change and uh, maybe how he can do it better. So, thanks for watching. Enjoy this music on the way out. I'm Marky Dragon. Take care.